So workflow is such an important part of our composition job. It's what enables us to work quickly and efficiently and also get ideas from our head onto the like pen or paper or the door or wherever as fast as possible and as seamless as possible without losing any details along the way. This can be really challenging if you've got a clunky system to deal with. So today I want to share with any Logic Pro users two very cool techniques that you can use in Logic Pro to help you with your compositions. They'll help you work more efficiently with MIDI and actually save some amazing takes you may have thought you lost. So let's dive in and check it out. Hey, my name is Steve and welcome back to Command Shift New. Logic Pro has some amazing features that are sort of under the hood and I would like to share some of them with you today. And these are features that you have to actually turn on and know how to get to. Once they're on and they're saved, they're done by default, they're always on, so you'll never have to turn them on again or think about them again, they'll always be there ready to go. But I reckon if you integrate these things into your workflow, you're gonna see some really positive changes. So I wanna talk about two things. Firstly, how to capture takes that you may have never hit the record button on. And secondly, how to record more efficiently with MIDI so that you can record one part and then the other. So let's dive into an empty session and get going. So I've got a very basic session here. I've just got the piano track set up with contact. It's just got the Noir felt piano loaded in there just to give us a little bit of sound. And the first trick I wanna do, we need to turn on a feature. What we can do is we can come up to the LCD panel at the top here into our section and we can hit the down arrow here uh, mine's just set to custom at the moment, so I get a lot of different details. But if you go into customize control bar and display, in here you have all the options that will allow you to turn on any of these features or indeed turn them off if you don't want them and affect all the buttons to the right and left of this control as well. So if I turn on this capture record button, it adds a new capture record button there. If you want that to be on all the time as well, you will just need to hit the save as default and that way, whenever you open up a Logic Pro session, that button will already be on there by default, which is really good and very handy. Now what happens here is essentially if I was playing in an idea, but I hadn't yet hit the record button because I was just mucking about with some stuff and I was like, oh, that sounds actually really, really good. I wish I hit that record button. Doesn't matter, Logic Pro has always been listening. It's very simple to use. Let me just play along something to a click track and then we will capture it afterwards. So all I've done there is I've just played along with the click track, but I haven't actually hit record button, so there's nothing in my session now. But if I hit this record button, or indeed type Shift R as the keyboard shortcut, then I suddenly see what I've just played populate in there as part of the MIDI track. And if I double click this one to open it up, I can see all the MIDI notes, even the sustain pedal that I was holding down, and it makes it so much more convenient. That way you've never lost an idea. And I use this all the time, particularly when I'm just kind of creating ideas or trialing things out. When I'm often working in an orchestral piece, for example, I might trial out a particular line on a particular instrument. Like I might try a trumpet line and see if that works. If it does, rather than re-recording it, I'll just go Shift R, I've captured the moment, and then I can come in here and I can edit the MIDI notes a little bit further. For example, I might want to just quantize them a little bit, not strictly to the beat, because I, you know, I still want a little bit of a human feel. I can manually shift any notes that feel like they're slightly out of time as well. And I know, for instance, I didn't put any kind of uh, sustain pedals in here, so I might add some extra sustain pedal stuff because it did change chords there. So it might sound a bit nicer with some changes in, to the sustain pedal. Then I can just simply play that back and it's exactly what I played before. Fantastic, right? So much of a time saver. And also, if you're anything like me, when you hit the record button, there's a lot of pressure to suddenly do everything correctly. Whereas if you're just trialing things out, you're not really uh, got any pressure of the fact that the record button is on and anything that you're doing is recording and it's gonna happen. So at that point, as long as you remember to capture it afterwards, all that pressure is gone. You can just experiment with the idea and anything you like, you just go, oh, I like that, shift R. You do have to remember though, to hit that shift R straight away. Sometimes if you go back and hit play again, again, then that recording is gone. It's only temporarily there. So as soon as you've done it and you've hit stop, if you like it, 
shift R it. Now the other thing that I do is I often like to play one hand and then the other hand uh, because I'm not a, I'm not a piano player. I'm not a very good keyboard player, so I can play you know a little bit like this, but then I might have a melody idea that I want to throw on top. Now normally if I wanted that all in the one MIDI region, I'd have to record all of that together. Otherwise, it's just going to be separate tracks, multiple CPU using plugins and all this sort of stuff. What we could do instead is turn on something that enables us to record additional tracks while still using our original instrument. I'll show you what I mean. So if I jump up into Logic Pro, into settings, and I'm gonna go down to recording. Down here, we've got what happens when overlapping track recordings. So if there's something already in our track, what happens? Well, when cycle is off under MIDI, what I like is for it to create a track. Normally, I think by default it's on merge, or it might be on create a take folder or something like that. But the problem with create take folder is that it will create separate takes that you can only choose one or the other. What the create track will do is it will create a second track with its own MIDI region and then you can combine it later once you've made some adjustments. It might be easier if I just show you what I mean. So let's try something like this. And I'm actually gonna combine techniques. So I'm just gonna trial something over the top and if I like it, I'll shift R it. I'm gonna hit Shift R here. There we go, it's created a second track. Importantly here, it's only a second track in the track workspace. If I hit X here, for example, on my keyboard to bring up the mixer, I'm still only seeing one track. Both of these tracks point to the one instrument. They're just creating these temporary tracks so that we've got all these MIDI ideas. And they do play together. If I go back and play this, So I can trial and hear these ideas. What's brilliant here is I can correct any mistakes if I made any. For instance, if I made any mistakes here, I could highlight all of this and quantize it. And importantly, once I'm ready to, I could combine these ideas together. I can highlight both of these, hold down command and hit the J key, and it joins the two together. And now they are all in one MIDI region. From here, we've got two tracks. It's still only pointing to one, but wherever this track doesn't have a MIDI region in it, so this one here, for example, is empty, I can just delete that one and it deletes the excess tracks. As long as you've got just one there, you'll always have the original track and the original track in the mixer as well. This is a fantastic thing because you can record parts separately, bring them together. You could record MIDI controls separately if you wanted to. Like if you wanted to open and close a filter on a synthesizer, you could record that afterwards, then combine the two blocks together. So hopefully these little tricks in Logic Pro will help you speed up your workflow and provide you a little bit of a better way to work with MIDI. I use these features every day and Honestly, this workflow has really saved me a lot of time and a lot of amazing takes. If you enjoyed this quick tip, then why not follow along for some more? You can always subscribe and you can ding that bell. You can like the video if you liked it, of course, or drop us a comment on what you'd like to see next. Otherwise though, I will catch you in the next one.